In this video, we update all of our devices. Hello everyone, and welcome to Tech Fix Flix. In this tutorial, we walk through the updating process for Windows, Mac OS, iOS and Android, between them accounting for 98% of devices in common use. For each system, we'll consider three tiers of updating, beginning with the operating system itself, before moving on to downloaded apps and concluding with additional data. By taking control of our update schedule, we ensure that updates are applied at a time of our choosing, rather than interjecting at the most inconvenient moment, whilst ensuring that we receive the latest features, bug fixes and security updates. If you'd like to jump to a specific operating system, the relevant timings are shown on screen now. We start with Microsoft Windows, the operating system installed on the vast majority of the world's desktop and laptop computers. From the desktop, we click the Start button, and at the Start menu, we move to the Settings cog, which expands slightly to reveal its title. We click that option, and after the splash screen, we enter the Windows Settings dialog. We click Update and Security, and on this occasion, we find that the system is already checking for updates. There may be occasions where a check isn't already in progress, and if this is the case, we'll instead see this button, and we therefore click Check for Updates. We now see a list of updates, and the content of this list will vary for each machine, in accordance with software installed and the time elapsed since the previous update. We see each update at varying stages of its installation, typically downloading, pending install, or installing. Depending upon the quantity and size of the update, as well as the speed of your processor and drives, you may wish to take a break and allow the PC to work through the list. Eventually, you'll see the number reduce. It may be necessary to restart your device in order to allow significant updates to perform. Before clicking Restart Now, be sure to save any unsaved documents. The machine will immediately restart. We see that the Windows updates are being configured, with percentage completion shown. We then log back into Windows. Incidentally, if you wish to bypass login automatically, we cover this in the tutorial shown on screen now, and linked in the written description accompanying this video. After login, we are returned to the desktop. Whilst we might assume that the updating process is complete, this may not be the case, as there may be more updates available, and we check by returning to Windows settings and simply replicating the steps we performed at the start of the tutorial, heading to Update and Security. Don't always accept the suggestion that you're up to date, particularly the first time you see it, and always click Check for Updates a second time to ensure that you have the latest available. Once again, Windows begins checking for updates, and we may see a further sequence of downloading, installing and pending updates. It may also be necessary to restart and repeat on multiple occasions, until Check for Updates no longer introduces further updates, and simply updates the time of the last check. At this point, we can move on to other areas of the system. Whilst we're in this menu, be aware of advanced options. Clicking here takes us to this dialog, where possibly the most important option is this one, which, when set to the on position, enables checking for updates to other Microsoft products. And this is most typically programs of the Microsoft Office suite, including Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook and others. These updates will be processed along with updates to Windows itself at the Windows Update screen, and indeed we saw many of them in our earlier updating task. Returning to the Windows Update menu, the other key option is to view Update History, which allows us to see which updates have been installed, when that installation took place, and whether the update was successful. Noting dates is important here, as we'd expect to see new updates successfully installed at least monthly, and failure to maintain this schedule may be indicative of a problem. Should your Windows update be stuck, you may wish to view the video shown on screen now, and linked in the written description accompanying this video. If the Windows operating system represents the first tier of updates, then apps and programs which run on it form the second. Programs which run on Windows broadly fall into two categories. The first are Windows apps, which are installed and maintained via the Microsoft Store. To update them, we click the Start button, and from the menu which appears, we click on the Microsoft Store tab, launching the store. Whilst the storefront offers many opportunities for purchase, we all already have many apps installed by default, irrespective of whether we've bought any more. We click the three dot menu in the upper right corner, dropping down to click on Downloads and Updates. Here we see a list of available updates, and in this instance there are 33. As before, the list will vary from machine to machine, and we can update apps individually by clicking the download icon to the right of each listing. In almost every instance, the option to update all apps is preferable, 
Clicking Get Updates will also perform the updates, but will also check for any further apps requiring attention. We therefore click Get Updates, which then greys out as the apps begin to update. We can again chart the progress of the update through the percentage indicator and the scrolling bar. The overall size of the download is also presented. Depending on the volume of updates to be processed, this may present a further opportunity to take a break. As each item finalises, we see a notification in the lower right of the screen, and this will refresh to show multiple completions. As before, the list will eventually reduce to zero. Once the final installation concludes, it appears as though there are no further updates to apply. However, once again we click Get Updates, and this check may yield further updates. And, this is simply a replication of the previous process, usually with fewer apps. Once we receive the message with the tick and the text advising that we're good to go, this is an indication that this phase of the task is complete. Unfortunately, at least as far as the updating process is concerned, not all software updates as uniformly as the Microsoft Store apps, and the greatest degree of variation is found amongst programs downloaded from the internet or installed from disk. Here are two examples, beginning with Google Chrome. To update Chrome, we navigate to its main menu, in this instance three vertical dots in the upper right. But where most programs would typically provide updates within its settings category, the route to update Chrome is found by moving our mouse to help, then sliding across to about Google Chrome. In addition to providing information about your version, this page also checks and updates your installation. Where an update is available, you'll be asked to restart Chrome by clicking a button upon completion. Otherwise, you'll simply be notified that Chrome is up to date. Now for a different example. Here we'll update SyncBack Free, a free file and folder backup utility which we demonstrated in the tutorial shown on screen now and linked in the written description. Here we see that the option to update is presented immediately at startup, and it's certainly good practice to take the opportunity. Clicking yes takes us to the web, where we need to effectively re-download the complete application. We've covered the installation in the linked tutorial, so we won't recap too extensively here, but we click the download icon, observe the downloading process, then click to launch the downloaded application, providing the required permission to user account control, accepting the license agreement, and allowing the installation to complete, clicking to finish the task, which relaunches the app. These are simply two of the methods by which a program can update, and there are many more, typically accessed through a dedicated update menu, or more likely a sub-menu found under a settings header. There is a third updating tier to consider, and this is typically found in data-heavy utilities like maps or apps requiring frequent data refreshes, including antivirus programs. Here, we aren't updating the programs themselves, but rather refreshing the data which they need to operate effectively. We'll use a vast free antivirus to demonstrate, and we begin by right-clicking on its taskbar icon. Here we see a dedicated update pathway, and we hover our mouse over it, revealing two update options, the lower of which will update the program itself, effectively paralleling the examples we've just demonstrated, and we would certainly also need to perform this task. However, for the purpose of this tier, we're following the option to update engine and virus definitions, so we click that option. Once clicked, the check is immediately performed. On completion, we're given a clear indication that our definitions are up to date. This isn't true of the application itself, so we click check for updates, which begins the search for application updates, which are then installed. On completion, we'll be required to restart our computer, and we can simply click the large restart now button to achieve this. Again, our machine restarts, and following login, returns us to the desktop. This is the template we'll follow for each of the remaining system types, in which we will initially update the operating system, then update apps, before finally updating data and definitions files which support those apps. Turning to macOS, the operating system used on Apple computers, you may receive a pop-up notification from which you can opt to install updates now, or defer to later. You can also perform a check manually, which we initiate by clicking the Apple logo in the upper left of the menu bar. We drop down to select the System Preferences option, noting that we could have achieved the same outcome by clicking upon the icon in the dock. At the System Preferences panel, we select Software Update, and clicking that option immediately commences an update check. Here we are offered the incremental update to Catalina version 10.15.5, which is the latest version available at the time of this video's publication. As an aside, we can further configure our update preferences by clicking on the Advanced button, where we can perform a number of updates automatically, including the automatic installation of macOS updates, as well as App Store updates. The default options are shown, although this can be tailored to perform as much or as little as you'd like automatically. 
With our preferences configured, we can now simply click update now to commence the update process. And with a significant version update of this type, we'll be required to restart the machine to complete the installation. Once we click download and restart, the process begins. Note that we are given a clear indication both as to the size of the download and the estimated time remaining toward completion. Once the process completes, there's an automatic restart. After a pause for installation, we are returned to the desktop. As with Windows, it remains good practice to repeat the check for updates until all outstanding updates are exhausted. Older versions of macOS, and here we're running High Sierra, can be updated via the App Store, which we click to run before navigating to the Updates section of the store, from where we can click to install a single update, or opt to update all where more than one is available. This method is also used within macOS to update any app downloaded through its App Store, and again we can update apps collectively or individually. As we saw with Windows, there's a third tier of data-dependent apps including antivirus software which requires specific data files to be updated. As with Windows, these apps are dealt with individually and in much the same way as their Windows counterparts. Staying with Apple, we now turn to iOS, popularised through the iPhone and iPad. In this instance, we're running iPadOS and to check for a new version, we launch the Settings app, scrolling down to General and selecting Software Update from the list of options. If an update is available, we'll see details here, as well as an option to download and install. Selecting that option requires authentication, which in our case requires PIN code entry. Once identity is confirmed, we can see that the update has been requested and the download should begin shortly thereafter. We can monitor the time remaining in the download phase until its conclusion. Once complete, the update enters a phase of preparation, before we are prompted to initiate the installation. The update is verified, and assuming successful verification, our device will close. It will restart with the familiar Apple loading screen. Upon return to the home screen, we will receive notification that the device has been successfully updated. We return to the update screen, purely to check that there are no further updates requiring installation. iOS greatly simplifies the process of checking for app updates, as all updates are channeled through the App Store, which we run to commence our check. In older versions of iOS, a dedicated update option appeared on the lower taskbar, but this has been replaced by Apple Arcade in more recent versions. In modern installations, we're required to tap our profile picture in the upper right, which opens our account details screen. Toward the bottom, we see a list of recently updated apps. Dragging down from the top of this screen, then releasing, reveals apps for which an update is available. And here, we scroll down to reveal two such apps. We can update an individual title by clicking the update button to the right of its entry, and we see a rotating circle which will fill as the update progresses. Once complete, the update transfers to the updated recently list. Rather than updating individually, it's typically more convenient to update all apps, and here we select that option which updates any outstanding apps. Having updated the operating system and the apps, all that remains are those apps requiring additional data, which are typically updated on an individual basis, and here we update the map files for maps.me. The option to update is presented at startup, and we simply tap the update option to begin. Once again, progress is clearly indicated via a percentage indicator. The greatest degree of variation is found in the Android operating system, running on many phones and some tablets, with each manufacturer indicating their own slant on the updating process. Here, we look at an example which largely reflects stock Android, but these steps will vary between devices. We drag down from the top of the screen. Whilst a number of frequently used settings are located here, we need to select the small cog icon in order to access the majority of system settings. The content shown here will vary considerably between devices, but the keywords we're looking for are updates, system, device or about. In the absence of any of these options, we scroll down where we see the system option with a subsetting of updates, so we tap that option. Again, the pathway to updating isn't immediately obvious, but selecting about takes us to a dialog from which the system updates can be accessed. In our test model, the manufacturer's update utility takes over at this juncture, and we can perform a check by clicking check now. Where updates are located, we will be offered the opportunity to install them here. Should the device be up to date, we'll be notified. Here's an example from Fire OS from Amazon, which itself is an Android variant. Once again, we can pull down from the top of the screen, which again reveals the settings cog. Clicking it takes us to the master settings, and we scroll down, where the setting which we require this time is labelled device options. Under device options, we see the helpfully labelled system updates, which is an obvious path to follow. 
we are presented with details of our current version and the most recent updates. And again, we have the option to check now. Any system updates will be applied at this point, and again we can continue until no updates are found. With the system updated, we now turn to individual apps. Of course, there are various app stores provided by rival manufacturers, including Samsung Galaxy apps, Amazon App Store, and many others. The Google Play Store is possibly the most prevalent, and running it, we tap the three-line menu in the upper left corner, selecting the My Apps and Games option from the top of that menu. From the screen which appears, we can see the number of updates outstanding, and once again we can update apps individually, or select the option at the top right to update all available apps. Of course, there are additional considerations for each platform. Windows hardware drivers will require separate installation, and we cover a means of simplifying that process in the tutorial shown on screen now, and linked in the written description. Games on Windows and Apple computers are increasingly being updated through dedicated platforms like Steam, Origin, Uplay, and the Epic Games Store. For more tutorials, check out our back catalogue, and be sure to subscribe for our future projects. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.